Stillness Flowing, The Life and Teachings of Ajahn Chah by Ajahn Jayasaro, narrated by Gosaka. Chapter 1. A Life Expired. The Death of Luang Po Cha. He who wants nothing of either this world or the next, who is desire-free and emancipated, him do I call a holy man. Dhammapada verse 410 A Death The 20th of January 1983 At the small provincial airport of Ubon Ratchathani in northeast Thailand, a group of Buddhist monks and lay supporters look up to the sky. Nearby them, a white ambulance is parked on the runway. A loud droning sound can be heard, its source soon traced to a Thai Air Force plane lumbering into land. After the plane taxis and comes to a halt, its door opens and reveals an unusual and moving sight. An imposingly large western monk starts to descend from the plane, cradling in his arms a much older and smaller Thai monk. This frail and helpless-looking figure is the revered master, Luang Po Cha. After five long months of tests and consultations in a Bangkok hospital, he has returned to Ubon in order to spend the last days of his life at home in his monastery Wat Nong Pa Pong, surrounded by his disciples. As it transpired, the last days of Luang Po's life came to exceed 3,000. It was not until 5.20 a.m. on the 16th of January 1992 that he finally passed away. By that time, he had survived such a succession of medical crises that it had seemed to many of his disciples that he could both leave them at any moment and that somehow he never would. There was a hope and expectation that before he left the world he would perform some kind of psychic marvel but he did not. At last, when his kidneys and his heart could no longer function, he went gentle into the good night. As soon as his passing was confirmed, the monks who were present, including Ajahn Liam the abbot, gathered around his bed to chant the verses of reflection on the impermanent nature of conditioned reality. Then, they set to work with the utmost care and attention, washing Luang Po's body and clothing it in a new full set of robes. News of the death spread quickly. As a chill morning dawned, monks, nuns and close lay disciples began arriving to pay their respects. They did not come to mourn and few tears were shed. But although Luang Po's death had been no surprise, it was nevertheless a shock. A heavy, stunned feeling hung in the air. As the day progressed, a steady trickle of people grew into a stream and then a river. Over a million people would bow to Luang Po's body before it was cremated exactly one year later. A seven-day period of royal funeral rites sponsored by the king was announced. In the evening, Dr. Chao Natsilawan, the king's representative, arrived to perform the traditional water-pouring ritual before the coffin containing Luang Po's body was moved to the main Dhamma Hall. In light of the plan to keep the body for a year, copious amounts of Chinese tea, tobacco and lime had been placed inside. Once in the Dhamma Hall, the coffin was placed in a polished, dark wood casket, ornately decorated with figures carved in Mother of Pearl. A photograph of Luang Po was placed to the left of the casket, together with his robes and bowl and other requisites. Wreaths from the king and queen and other members of the royal family were placed to the right. In front of the casket, elaborate flower arrangements completed the shrine. 
the monastery announced a 15-day period of Dhamma practice, consisting of chanting, meditation and Dhamma talks open to all. Similar events would mark 50 and 100 day ceremonies of commemoration. Now was the time, senior disciples said, to wholeheartedly cultivate the Dhamma through body, speech and mind, and dedicate the accrued merit as an offering to Luang Po. Their wise and compassionate teacher was no more for this world, but they would never forget him or the things that he had taught them.